Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Dr. Heather Carden and welcome to Ask Dr. Heather. If you don't know who I am, um, I've been practicing for tw over 20 years. I'm the co-owner of Carden Center for Wellness where we practice a very functional style of wellness where we actually look at what's happening in the interferences of the body, identify them and help remove the interferences so the body can actually facilitate healing. Our goal with every patient or every Facebook Live or every workshop that we do is actually help you take away a couple of tools that will just make a two to three degree shift and help you optimize your journey towards better health. We are all unique individuals. We are all on different paths. So I've really enjoyed all the comments you guys have shared back on inspire me of what to talk about because I can talk about something every day as many of you know and it's hard to just come on one time a week but I want to keep this super targeted to what you guys have asked for. So so tonight we are talking about intermittent fasting, fasting mimicking diet, fasting in general. I get so many questions. Does this count? Does that count? What really is it? So we're going to get there. And then I want to close up with just visiting my Facebook page where I have hundreds of before and after. So I thought, gosh, I could sit here and copy off. I looked, I've got four different albums of labs, cholesterols, A1Cs, uh, inflammatory markers, pictures of people's bodies before and after. It is just amazing what can happen when you actually just do a couple of really small things, which is just identify when you're hungry and identify your eating when and everything else falls into place. You don't have to calculate everything. You don't have to count everything, but you do need to start being more in tune to your body instead of just running on ILO autopilot and having every day be Groundhog's Day because that's what we don't want to have them tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Well, today's the day that you guys popped on. Today's the day that hopefully you get some inf information to help you optimize your journey towards um, better health. So I have a couple of links up above. One of them is a link, a Google spreadsheet, so you can actually get information and live updates when I'm having closed Zooms or workshops, live workshops, online workshops, um, when I'm doing Facebook Live, so you can see what the topic is and see if it's something you wanna join, because I don't want anybody to miss anything that they might need to know for their health. Also, I'm the chair of Low Carb KC, which is happening October 19th and 20th. Tons of amazing speakers, so pop over to the Low Carb KC page, Join the page, follow along. I also am the mother of four amazing young gentlemen. My youngest just turned 16 all the way up to 23. Um, I also am one of the uh, Prove It specialists, so ketone specialist. I also am a reboot coach, and I'm also an independent promoter for Prove It. So I am a firm believer in supplementation, being a farm girl from Kansas, but I wanna get right down to business tonight. We're gonna talk about fasting and hopefully clear up all the information. One of the best books I ever read, and I've actually met Dr. Jason Fung, simple, simple, simple book, is the fasting guide. It is very simple and easy to follow. We have been fasting since our whole lives, I'm gonna say that, because when actually when we're babies and born and we're waiting to get maybe the sucking reflex or waiting for mother's milk to come in, we're actually fasting from that point, maybe 12, 24, even 30 hours sometimes for mother's milk come in. If we look clear back to the biblical times or the ancestral time, the caveman time, so ever far you wanna look back, We've always been fasting. We didn't have refrigeration. We didn't have 24 hour drive through. We didn't have big pantry cabinets. We didn't have processed food. Processing allows things to stay on the shelf forever. And that's actually what has caused a lot of the diseases of civilization. So we're gonna focus on your questions on fasting and what everybody's been sending me. Does this count? Does that not count? What's the deal with you put fat in your coffee, fat in your tea? So we're gonna get right down to it. Fasting by definition simply means abstaining from a food or a drink. So dry fasting, which is only done short term. Again, I'm not making recommendations. I'm simply sharing credible information and then I'm gonna give you some suggestions. So dry fast means nothing, no water, no liquids. Now, maybe if you had the flu for a period of time, maybe you did a dry fast and got in ketosis accidentally, uh, or maybe you're out on a long bike ride and your tire got flat and you ran out of water and you could have done a short fast then. When you're sleeping, you're abstaining from food and from water. So there's many times you have done that. But again, we would not recommend that. A water fast is done generally under medical supervision. It can be done for religious reasons. It can be done for health reasons. There's an amazing clinic over in Germany who has been doing 21 day water fasting and they've done thousands of patients from anything from schizophrenia to Parkinson's to cancer to just general wellness, letting people rest. Amazing results. So if you guys have not seen the science of fasting on Amazon, please watch it. If you guys have watched it, drop a one down below. If you've seen the magic bullet, put a bullet down below. I wanna see what you guys are watching. So maybe it's 
something I need to watch as well. So we know that with water fasting, after they did 21 days, people did not get electrolyte imbalanced. And so people say, well, why is that? So I know a lot of you on here are getting ready to do the, the uh, 60 hour keto reboot, which we'll talk about. The problem is, is that when you're eating carbohydrates or when you're eating even protein, what happens is our sodium potassium ATPase pump is kicked on. So if you're not eating carbohydrate, there's no reason for that sodium potassium pump to kick on. The same thing is true with B6, B12. Those are all used for carbohydrate metabolism. So if you're fasting and not eating carbohydrate, it makes sense that the sodium potassium ATPase pump is not going to have to work. So you're not going to get potassium deficient. And the same is true for B12, which is an intrinsic vitamin used in our stomach to help break down carbohydrate and protein metabolism. So they're finding after 21 days of fasting, thousands of patients, people are not getting electrolyte imbalance. I have people ask me all the time, when do I put in an electrolyte? When your labs tell you so, when your potassium's low, your magnesium's low, your sodium's low, that's when you put in an electrolyte, when your lab value, your blood value tells you that. So dry fasting, nothing. Water fasting, water only. And you're going to see a lot of the people out there in the biohacking world doing a lot of water fasting. Again, if you're already macronutrient depleted, I would not recommend that because you're not going to rebuild up those electrolytes. You're not probably going to lose any, but you're not going to get back to a healthier state and maybe too much stress on your body. There's also what called fat fasting. Fat fasting is done anywhere from three to five days. It's having a diet about 800 calories in fat, which adds up super quick. It's about eight to 10 tablespoons of fat, honestly. And you do that for three to five days. That's a very easy way to transition into ketosis. So let's take one break there if you're brand new to the ketone world or ketosis. Ketosis simply means your body's in a metabolic state burning fat for fuel. So we have three macronutrients, carbohydrates, use insulin, and we get glucose. I'm a visual learner, sorry. And then proteins that break down via insulin and we get amino acids and make antibodies. Then fats break down, no insulin needed, and we get molecules called ketones. So our body can actually run on either ketones or it can actually run on carbohydrates. Most of us are on the standard Western diet, consuming a diet high in carbohydrates. So anything over 25% carbohydrates, you're probably not in ketosis. Maybe if you're an elite athlete, you could do 40%. But on the standard American diet, which is 45 to 65% carbohydrates, you are probably burning sugar for fuel. Sugar for fuel called glucose only lasts about 30 minutes. So on a fat fast, when you actually cut the carbohydrates down to less than about 3%, um, you're gonna get just the carbohydrates from nuts and you do about 800 calories of fats, it's gonna give your body a way to actually slip into ketosis. So you'll burn through all those, the glucose and glycogen. So it's a glucose in your blood, the glycogen in your muscle, and then your body, specifically your liver, will go and grab that fat and break it down and call, make what's called ketones. So that happens very simply. So a fat fast is a great option to help transition your body over into that. There's also something called the fasting mimicking diet. And Dr. Victor Longo has been studying this for a very long time. He owns the Longevity Clinic out in California. I um, know everything's backward, but he is what's called the Prolon diet or the fasting mimicking diet. Again, almost a decade of research on this, and he's compared this to a water fast. So he's had someone do a five day water fast, and then what he has metabolically designed is a five day fast called the prolong or the fasting mimicking diet. There are actually food with that you, that you take. It's a balanced thing of soups. I'm going to show you a picture here. So it's soups and some very specific teas and very specific fats and olives that you actually consume over five days. And he's found that metabolically, again, if you're someone who cannot do a water fast, you're not eligible for it, medically you're not, or emotionally you're not, or you've had an eating issue uh, maybe before where you know that you shouldn't restrict your calories, this may be a great option for you. It's called the fasting mimicking diet by Dr. Victor Longo. You'll see him also referred in some of those, uh, the, the uh, science of fasting. You'll see his work there. You can find a lot of stuff on YouTube, but it's supposed to get the same metabolics. And I have done this before. And honestly, it's a few more carbohydrates than I usually consume. So I actually found myself to be hungry on this versus once I get into a fasted state, I'm generally not hungry after about the 70, 68, 70 hour. I'm generally kind of over that, that kind of hungry, hangry stuff. But again, he's got a great science on that and talks about why that is. So dry fat, fast, water fast, fasting mimicking diet, intermittent fasting. This is the biggest topic. Intermittent fasting, or let's call it intermittent feeding like Dr. Dominic D'Agostino does, simply means a time that you're eating and a time that you're not. So I wish you guys could see, but my hummingbird is right there. So the hummingbird only comes to the feeder 
when it's hungry, right? And it does its business, does its business, and then when it's hungry again, it comes back to the feeder. That's the same thing that happens with intermittent feeding. So we talked about at the beginning of this. My goal really is for you to really identify, am I really hungry? Like, am I hungry? Am I just eating on autopilot? It just looked good. There was a bite. I heard a mom today say, I don't want to waste it because the kids didn't eat it, which is a very common thing that we happen in the U.S., the bottom of the bag fries or the last bite of a peanut butter and jelly or the crust of a sandwich. So we know what happens is that a little bit of biology. So intermittent fasting just means a simply a period that we eat and a simply a period that we don't eat. So hopefully when you're all sleeping, you are not eating or feeding. So we talk about that fasting time that generally starts about two hours post your last meal. So one thing about science you need to remember is you probably have heard all over the internet, gut brain balance, your immune system's in your gut. It is all 100% true. That stuff is true. There's more nerves in your digestive tract than actually in your spinal cord. So if you wake up and you eat at 6 a.m. and then maybe you have a snack mid morning and then you have lunch at noon or one, then you have another snack on the way home and then you have dinner at five or six and then a bedtime snack of popcorn or something like that, an apple or whatever it is, wine or, or cheese or whatever it is you're having, you and that happens maybe at nine o'clock at night so you're feeding from 6 a.m to 9 p.m that's 12 13 14 that's 15 hours it's actually more than that because it takes two hours for your blood sugar to return to normal and then it takes four hours for your nervous system to calm down so if you're eating your last meal at nine it's almost 1 a.m before your nervous system is totally calmed down so we wonder why we have anxiety why we have fatigue our nervous system isn't getting proper rest because the resting time is when our body repairs and restores our hormones such as cortisol, such as insulin is a hormone, and a lot of other things that happens when our heart gets to rest, it's when our respiration gets to rest, it's when our body does its best work at restoring and fighting you know, precancerous cells, letting the spleen rest so it can actually rejuvenate. We're constantly making cells all day long, and if our body is super concerned with feeding 14, 15 hours a day, it makes sense. We're going to be tired. We're going to be fatigued. We're going to be craving stuff because you're tired. You're craving stuff. And when you're eating little bits of carbohydrate, the sugar goes up, it goes down. There's a lot of hormones called dopamine, epinephrine, norepinephrine that make you crave that stuff again. So we know that if we can actually listen to our body and take advantage of our sleeping state, because again, we're not eating when we're sleeping. And maybe we do wake up at six o'clock and make sure that you have a good 12 to 16 ounces of water and then identify if you're truly hungry. So drink water because hunger and, and dehydration can mimic the same thing. So oftentimes people really weren't hungry, they just drank water. Or oftentimes I'll be reviewing a chart in someone's food chart and say, you know what? I just ate breakfast because it was the time I wake up, I shower, I eat, and I go. I'm like, were you hungry? And I had someone say, I don't even know what hunger is. What is hunger? So that's so important. I was at an event last night. We were talking about it. We're actually in a grocery store marketplace talking about identifying when hunger is. Because if you can do that, you can win a whole bunch of challenges that you want to really challenge or conquer with your health care life. So what that can look like, and you're going to see a lot of people doing an 818. So we all know there's 24 hours in the day, although we try to live like there's 30 or we wish there were 30, or some of us may wish there was only 20 hours of the day, but there's 24 hours of the day. So when you look at that clock, and this is just my noon day, and say that you do wake up at 6 a.m. and you have some water, maybe some tea, maybe some coffee, and we'll get those questions answered. Your first meal starts at 10, then that gives you time if you're going to eat in an eight-hour window all the way up to 6 p.m. That doesn't mean you have to go to bed at six, but that means your last meal's at six. That gives your body two more hours to process and downregulate the glucose because it rises and then drops two hours post dinner. And then by 10 o'clock when you're ready to go to bed, your nervous system is ready to go to bed. So oftentimes you'll see people starting, maybe you're starting at a 14 hour eating window or a 10 hour eating window, which means you're having a 6 a.m. breakfast and 8 p.m. dinner. And what we like to have you do is just start smushing it in, just toggle in that morning 45 minutes, toggle in that evening you know, 45 minutes. And you're gonna see creating that metabolic confusion identifying when your body's hungry and eat fat first, you're going to find huge wins in whether it is headaches, whether it's fatigue, whether it's better sleep, whether it's fat loss, whether it's balancing blood sugar, better immune system. Because again, if you're eating all day long, your body can't do what it needs to do, which is repair and make hormones, repair and make hormones. We want to anti-age our body. We don't want to fast forward our body. And that's what we're doing when we're overstressing our immune system. Look at how many broken brains are out there, how much anxiety, depression, ADD, ADHD, and so 
insomnia. I know one of the major symptoms, um, reactions or contraindications you'll find, I'm gonna say that differently. One of the major side effects of sleeping pills is actually suicidal tendencies. So it, often what came first? Was it the insomnia? Was it the anxiety from not sleeping? Was it the depression from not sleeping? Or was it a side effect of the medication? It's hard to say where to point the finger, but what we do know is we can actually hone in that window. I know in the 80s we were say, don't eat the fat, don't have the sodium, and definitely don't fast. You definitely have to eat all day long, three meals, two, two snacks. Well, in 1977, we had three meals a day. In 2005, we went to five meals a day. Do you know if we just eliminate one meal a day, we could almost eradicate world hunger? I heard that stat on the uh, on one of the documentaries, so it's out there. I'll quote that if somebody needs to know what that's quoted from. I've got it written down in the other room. But just think about that. I know in the 80s, we were told to be ahead of the sugar game or be the glucose game because once our glucose drops, it eats into our lean muscle. That is absolutely true on a high carbohydrate diet on a high fat diet because fats last three to four hours ketones protect your lean muscle you can actually go quite a bit longer you're going to feel fuller so instead of having little sparks of carbohydrates throughout the day whether it's your oatmeal your blueberries your crackers your cheese you want to have healthy fats like eggs and bacon or some tuna salad without the bread those nice health fat things i like chia seeds uh, i love almond milk waffles those type of things which are very full and satisfying full of macronutrients and not processed so i want you this week to actually Kind of look down on your piece of paper or write down like or in your phone what time you're waking up to eat. You guys are mostly people are tracking their steps. Let's track when you eat, not just what you eat. And no, notice, am I truly hungry? So if you think you are, again, have a big drink of water, which would be maybe 20 minutes, have eight to 10 ounces. And then if you're hungry, have something, but have fat first, maybe three olives, maybe a little handful or one or two ounces of nuts. Maybe it's a half avocado or a holy guacamole with some celery and see if you're actually hungry. If you are, then please eat. And we do want the biggest meal of the day in the middle of the day. Anywhere from 11 to 3, we want that big meal of the day. Your body can use all that energy up, have a light dinner, and then go to bed. So I wanted to show you just a couple of examples. And I know I've gotten a lot of questions. That's why I'm going to hold it up backwards because I still haven't figured out that thing. So intermittent fasting is what we're talking about. And people say, well, what if I have my coffee? Does that actually imbalance or start my fasting? So this is what you need to do to be a good detective. So if you're unsure what your hours are when you're eating, if you're just drinking water, then that doesn't count because it has no calories. Coffee really doesn't have calories either. However, if you are caffeine sensitive, maybe you have a hidden caffeine allergy, which can be very true for people who have soybean, peanut, legume allergies. Coffee actually can be a sensitivity too. But what you need to do is simply get a glucose and a ketone meter. You need to check blood, not urine with that. And what you do is you check your finger and see what your glucose is, and then drink your cup of coffee. And then about 45 minutes later, an hour later, check your glucose. If your glucose went up, you broke your fasting. Because in a fasted state, that glucose should be steady, right? Because think about sleeping. When we're resting, we're not eating. So when you wake up, you have a shower, you drink water, still haven't eaten, your glucose should be the same. Your blood pressure and pulse will go up and down, but your blood sugar should not. So fat coffee. So people have asked me that. So if your blood sugar goes up 45 minutes, an hour and 15 minutes after drinking anything, whether it's bone broth, exogenous ketones, Keto cream, one, four, three, whether you're putting coconut oil in your coffee or tea or grass fed butter, if your blood sugar goes up, glucose goes up, then you know that's when you're, you just broke your fast and that's when your feeding time starts. So I know people have been biohacking that. We had a lot of comments earlier on that. That's why I didn't want to do a private Zoom because I had so many questions on this. Um, Thank you, Sally. I've tried that before, but I'll try it again. Um, so she's telling me how to flip that. I know the little tool button, but so um, just with that being said, so you need to have those tools to see if you're breaking. If that's really important to you, when am I, oh, great question, Yvonne. So it, when am I breaking my fast? When am I doing that? Well, anytime you put food in your mouth. So butter's really considered food, right? Doesn't have any carbs, but it sells some calories. So, but some people actually still their body so efficient. It's a fat burner. Just like when you're sleeping, you're burning ketones. Butter will break down to ketones. MCT oil will break down to ketones that your body actually won't have a rise in blood sugar. So I don't know the answer. If you're a person having fat coffee, fat tea, um, something like coconut milk, coconut powder in your coffee or tea or water, if your blood sugar goes up, that breaks your fast. So that's the very, very simple answer. I had put this up a couple weeks ago 
where this I have is a morning time. So you wake up, you have your water, maybe your coffee or tea. Some people may be having exogenous ketones. Some people may be having their fat coffee or keto cream. Then you have your eating hours. This doesn't mean you're having ketones five times a day, but this is your eating window, things that you would eat. So healthy fats and greens and meat. And then stopping that, again, you're going to continue water bone broth, maybe some keto calm tea, maybe some, you know, some more MCT oil or some healthy fats and water in bedtime. So if you're measuring this two hours post sleep, so you end up dinner at six o'clock at 8 p.m. You check your blood glucose and let's say it's 80 and then you decide to have a cup of bone broth and then it goes up to 85, then you're still eating. You're not fasting yet. Or maybe you have some keto cream or keto calm because it does have some calories. If your blood sugar goes up, then you know you're still in that eating window or feeding window. That's as simple as it can get. There's no other magic bullet. I probably had four or 500 questions on this in the last couple of weeks. So I, hopefully that makes it really, really clear for you. So someone's asking about exogenous ketones and I'm gonna talk about the reboot because I had a ton of questions as well. So when you're working a night shift, that can be very tricky, but you need to treat your body like it's that shift. So if you're sleeping during the day and you have to work at night, you need to feed your body while you're working because that's when your energy expenditure is. You don't need to feed your body when you're sleeping. So if you do work an overnight schedule, the same thing's kind of true. So if you work 11 to seven, then and maybe you wake up at say 8 p.m. and then you have some water, you shower, you go to work and you start your shift at 11, then maybe you have something to eat at 11 or 12, just depending on what your job or occupation is. And then again, the same thing, if you're gonna go back to bed at 10 a.m., then four hours before that sleep time, you wanna have your last meal. So again, when we're using exogenous ketones, they're used for an energy source. So why do you use them in the non-feeding window? for an energy source to help preserve your lean muscle mass to help keep your ketone level higher. So it's a win-win situation. It also helps keep cravings down, um, helps keep your blood sugar balanced. So you would just have to simply test that. Um, I love these questions you guys coming in. So hopefully that makes sense on a swing shift. And oftentimes it can, I mean, it's very hard on your adrenal glands. It's hard on your thyroid to work that swing shift, but treat it like a feeding window. So the rule of it is whenever you go to bed, so if you go to bed, at midnight or if you go to bed at 10 o'clock, four hours prior to bedtime, last meal. And in between last meal and sleep time, that's gonna to be tons of water. Generally, you can do some, you know, some sleepy time tea, some smooth move tea, some herbal tea without caffeine. But again, if you're doing some caffeine in there and you're caffeine sensitive and your blood sugar rises, then you know that you're still in that feeding window. So that's where you have to be a little bit of a detective and scientist and keep that down. So that should clear up about the last 400 questions that I've heard. So if you're having problem with spiking blood sugar or you think, you know, my ketone level's super high, you're a person who's fat adapted, you're in ketosis and your ketone level's 2.0 and then you eat something and it goes down, that simply means either you had too many carbs because your glucose was stimulated or maybe you had a food allergy or food sensitivity or your guts off and it's not breaking it down it's a it's a very tricky state i've done a ketogenic diet on and off um, and i've taught it for several decades almost two decades i'm going to say a decade plus and a half we've got a low carb high fat slash ketogenic diet and you know it can be very very tricky because sleep imbalance pain imbalance age activity overhydration, stress in any way shape or form whether it's physical stress pain mental emotional stress different pharmaceuticals hormone replacement all that stuff can throw your body out of that natural state. It can also drive up your glucose. That's why we see metabolic resistance, insulin resistance happening because we're overstressed out, we're overfed, and we're feeding way too long. And then again, we're over medicated. So the average 60 year old takes six medications a day. And I think we have like every minute we have six people turning 60 years old every minute. There's some math on that with the sixes. But with that being said, know that there, there's, there's no perfect system for one person that somebody can just say stamp and this say, this is what everybody should do. The thing is, listen to your body. If you're not dehydrated, because again, we can go about two minutes without breathing. We can go up only about three days without water. If you guys haven't watched Negative Afraid, you'll see them getting ketosis pretty easy and then they're not hungry anymore. But three days without water, you guys can go tons of time without food. I posted an article earlier that a guy went a year without having any food, just water and some electrolytes. So we know that a male who is 40 years old at 10% body fat has 40,000 stored calories. So if they burn, 3,000 calories a day, 4,000 calories a day, let's say, then do the math on that. They can go 10 days without food. So you really need to listen to your body and do it under medical supervision. So dry fast is nothing, water fast is water only, under medical supervision. Again, check with your doctor first. Fat fasting is meant to be done three to five days, really just about 800, um, 800 
calories, about 90% fat. So it could be a few olives, an avocado, a few nuts and seeds, you know, a, a hemp seed pudding or something like that. And that's about 800 calories. And then we have intermittent fasting, which I love for everyone to practice every day. Our daily demands are different. Some days you work out, some days you don't. Some days maybe you've got to run after a dog and find them or a kiddo or, you know, depending on your job and your activity, maybe one day you're doing laundry and running up and down the stairs. All your metabolic demands are changed every day. So that's why it's so important to tune in. Am I hungry and should I feed? And what should I feed first? Well, eat fat first because that will actually tell your body how that satiety works. So then we talked about Victor Luongo's fasting mimicking diet. You guys want more information, simply fill out that Google Doc link up above it. Ask Dr. Heather and I will get you more information. Just send me a quick note on that. And then we have, which I actually want to know who has not done this keto reboot because I want to really reach out to you. The keto reboot is the best mix of all of them. So it's somewhere in between a fat fast, somewhere in between a water fast, except for you are not water fasting only because you are getting calories. You're getting bone broth. You're getting, I'm going to pull my little sheet out here, guys, and cheat a minute. <clears throat> Thanks for letting me pop over there. I have a lot, a lot of little pieces of paper here for you guys. Um, so when we're, we're talking about that, you're getting amino acids, you're getting collagen, you're getting zinc, you're getting B vitamins, you're getting niacin, you're getting some amino acids, you're getting beta hydroxybutyrate. So what the reboot kit does, what I love is actually helps be ahead of the game, ahead of the blood sugar drop, ahead of the cravings. It helps protect your lean muscle mass, which is so important. Oftentimes that first bit that you start on a ketogenic diet yourself or in some type of water fasting, whatever you choose to do, sometimes you're going to have a really big, I don't call it a keto flu, I call it a carb flu. So what happens is once your body shifts from sugar burning, which is carbohydrates, into fat burning, which is ketone burning, that period doesn't feel very good. If you guys have ever been an endurance runner, that may happen mile six or seven for you. If you're a cyclist, it may happen mile 10 or 12. If you're a rower, it may happen mile eight or nine. So when everybody shifts from the glucose and gets in that fuel source and you feel like, wow, I'm the energizer bunny, I could go on forever. That's when your body went through that sugar hole and hit to the fat hole, so to speak. So you got in that state of ketosis. That's where you're free from cravings. That's why I'd use the F word earlier and someone called me and said, hey, that doesn't make sense. It doesn't fit well. Well, my favorite F word is fasting and fats and freedom from craving, freedom from food, and just free your feeling all along. And you have a lot more fun when you have more energy. So that was kind of my F term about upgrading your health. So we know that if you can reboot or cleanse every single month, it's like cleaning up your dryer vent and your dryer, just for my dryer go off every single month. It's like getting your teeth deep cleaned. It's like getting your carpets deep cleaned. We know women cycle every month, the moon cycles every month. It's just helping regenerate and rest that body. Remember we talked about on that day where someone eating all day long and your nervous system is working all day long well if you can consume a proper blend of macronutrients that have amino acids zinc b vitamins collagen beta hydroxybutyrate where your body's already saying i've got ketones i have ketones i have ketones my liver doesn't have to make them it allows your body to metabolically shift or just slide into that state of ketosis without having to work because on a ketogenic diet it can take days or weeks Sometimes it takes people months and people never get there because their bodies are just so metabolically challenged. Either the signaling from the brain to the rest of the body and the liver won't happen, their liver is sick, they can't control the stress in their life or they're on a lots of medication. Sometimes it just can't happen. Maybe you're missing organs like part of your intestine from a car wreck or maybe you're missing your gallbladder spleen from a car wreck. There's lots of reasons, but this is an amazing way to help protect your body, to get the nutrients, to get the calories, to protect it. It's not recommended. None of these are recommended for someone who's pregnant underneath the age of eight. 18. So no to any children, anyone who thinks they're getting pregnant wants to get pregnant, anyone who's breastfeeding. So there's a group of people it's not right for, but there's a whole bunch of us. We know two thirds of Americans are obese two-thirds and that is rising. Childhood obesity is on the rise. Type 2 diabetes is the number one diagnosis disease amongst children. How do we get that saved? We actually do something like we do a reboot. So we actually reset our blood sugar. We reset our cravings. We reset that hunger clock. So we're not on autopilot just eating. I have four boys. How many times do your kids or do you go in and just open the refrigerator and look? And it's the same thing. And two hours later, you open up the refrigerator and look. And then you open up the refrigerator again. Look, I mean, it happens at my house all the time. I can hear it opening and closing. They're not eating. They're just checking. I don't know what they're checking for. There's nothing new or magical, but we all do that. We're all in that autopilot and that little voice in our head that says, you don't need to eat that. I know it looks delicious, but you don't need to eat that. You don't need any energy right now. You don't need any processed food. There's nothing in your body saying, hey, feed me processed food. I need some soda and some Pop-Tarts. There's nothing cellular saying that. There may be some craving hormones going on that says, I need sugar. That is 
is real. That does happen because sugar is super addictive. But when you're using these techniques, again, I'm going to refer back to Jason Fung's book. He has a lot of different patterns for fasting, a lot of different ways to do it with or without bone broth. Bone broth is God's Gatorade. It has a ton of minerals and collagen and everything that you need. But he'll talk. I think he's got about 10 different patterns of fasting. So it's really unique and individual for what your body needs and what your goals are. So if you guys have not done the reboot, I want to know tonight. It's only on sale for a very short time and I want to help you get that and coach through it. So either private message me, please. It's only available for a few days and I'm getting ready to go on a holiday for a couple of days or, you know, send me a note privately, put your email down below. Just let me know how I can help you with that. I am going to put this on my YouTube channel. So anybody who missed it, I want to make sure you get the recording of it because I am literally getting hundreds of questions, but I'm going to take my phone away for a minute here and I'm going to show you guys something because pictures are worth a thousand words. And when um, you guys go to, to find me on Facebook, I should be able to turn that around, right guys? Sorry for the pause there. Here we go. I am Ask Dr. Heather, and this tells you about every Thursday night I'm coming to you live based on what your questions are. I have folders and folders and folders of before and afters that people have turned into me. I've got a whole folder of just lab work. Not everybody has done everything. This is Dr. Ralph at 245 pounds and Dr. Ralph at about 198. So you're going to see tons of people that you know who are Facebook influencers on here because they want to share their story and inspire. So if you're a person who's more of a number person, I'm going to show you, I've got an album of just lab work. So if you're a person who wants to see cholesterol changes and please feel free to share these A1Cs, it's going to be slow now. And again, instead of me printing these off, I wanted you guys to see where they are on my Ask Dr. Heather page. You're going to find before and after measurements, before and after blood sugars, before and after cholesterol. These are all things people have shared with me clinical information about using ketones with cancer. This is Dr. Adrian Sheck's work here, right here. You're going to see Dr. Angela Poff's work right here. So please, when we're done, pop over there. Look at people anti-aging on all the different metabolics that we have here. So I'm going to turn it back around so you guys don't get dizzy. But you even see drastic skin changes in just a very short period of time when you in your body the right fuel so I'm gonna close with this so think of a peach because they're in season right now and I got everybody coming into my office with peaches on their food diary sorry about my hand guys think of a peach that sits on the counter it starts to turn brown it starts to wrinkle then it doesn't taste very good and it's all soft what happens to our body as it age starts to get spots start to get soft start to wrinkle think of a coconut or a walnut or a pistachio or sunflower seed it's nice and hard and firm so when you go to eat I want you to actually start thinking about that when you go to eat your food. I'm going to eat food that firms my body, like healthy fats that come from coconut or come from things that are hard like nuts and seeds. Um, I love flax seeds and all sorts of seeds. Instead of doing more of the processed fats, I do more of the plant fats because I think it's more balanced for the omega-3 and omega-6, which we may talk about as well. So I just want to make sure you guys know how to find me also on Instagram. Most of my things are titled. I have a thyroid talk. I have an adrenal talk all on my YouTube channel, which is Ask Dr. Health. Heather. Again, I want to hear from you guys. The topic last week, if you didn't hear it, was all about gut health. So we really talked about significant gut health and candida because that was a huge question I kept getting. So we may revisit that situation again because it seems like there's a lot of candida going around, but I'm going to show you a few pictures here. This is a person over 60 years old in less than a few months period of time. This is actually his body fat. And this is his body fat going down. So when you see the body fat going down, we think, well, that just was that was just water waste. That's not what all that he lost. Then actually when we look at this, we see his muscle percentage starting and finishing. It absolutely went up. And then when we look at his weight history, his weight <laughs> absolutely went down. And we're gonna see his water mass go up. We're gonna see his metabolic age. So this is his bone percentage. So not only did his weight go down, his muscle mass went up. We also see a huge increase in his bone density because he's eating a healthier, low carb, high fat diet using the techniques we talked about here on intermittent fasting. So if you guys are ready to kickstart your body in the right way, let me know. I have an amazing 10 day keto kickstart program. We're kicking off on August 9th. I need to know soon if you want to join us. I talked with Dr. Jamie. We've got about nine spots left. We've already filled. We do about 50 at a time. We've already filled right around 41, 42 spots. So we've got nine spots left for our 10 day keto kickstart, which starts on August 9th. Space is limited. So let me know. And again, if you want to know more about the reboot, then simply just 
just message me down below. I'm holding it backwards and I'll absolutely help you and guide you through that. So this is Dr. Heather Carden. Say have an amazing day. I cannot wait to hear your stories and please share down below. If there's a topic you want to hear about, that's how I answer questions. When I get four or 500 questions on, is this breaking my fast? Is butter doing this? Is that doing that? Then I come live and post it. And since I'm only trying to come live once a week, I really want to talk about that question. So Mike, last week we, so we talked about ketones and candida. So you can just scroll back to last Thursdays and you can actually hear all about how we talked about how I used a ketogenic diet the first several years of my practice to actually help fight candida. But you have to also restore that normal flora. So we ch chatted about that, which I love to talk about. So I know fibromyalgia was a big hit. So I'm going to revisit that again because I kind of put it together with several autoimmune diseases. So we're going to target back on fibromyalgia. I am here to help you guys. If you read my mission statement 20 years ago, it was always to help you find the answers that you need to start your journey towards optimal health. And now that social media is here, because back then we just had the yellow pages um, and a microphone, now that we have social media, I really wanna help optimize your life. I just wanna help you make those two or three degree shifts. So start journaling your journey, your homework this week, identify when you're hungry, and then don't eat anything four hours before bed. Absolutely consume water, absolutely some herbal tea that hasn't seemed to rise unless you have a tea allergy that could rise your blood sugar but you may need to invest in a little meter you can get them on amazon maybe your friend's a diabetic and say hey can i check that out after we're eating or hanging out everyone seems to have a meter these days you don't have to check every day but it's a really good way to answer that question what is it doing to my body how is it affecting me am i still fasting and getting all the benefits of fasting which is better energy allowing my nervous system to rest when your nervous system rests you sleep better anxiety is better focus is straight on aristotle used to make his students fast before coming to class and then you're going to hear a lot of stuff about um, Lynn private message me and I will absolutely get your information so send me a message and I'll get that to you but we know that fasting and fitness is coming up Dr. Fenny and Volick wrote a book on performance and how they had cyclists actually fasting and then fasting plus exogenous ketones and what the performance was and how much more oxygen was getting to the body and how much better the recovery was so that was probably done 10 or 12 years ago so this is not new information we're just rolling it out again the book the cleanest clearest book I recommend reading for clarification is Dr. Jason Fung's book he also wrote the obesity code or breaking the obesity code and the fasting guide it's a easy read over the weekend so thank you guys for joining me and taking time out of your life time is super precious 30 minutes towards your health. Hopefully you got some nuggets here to help optimize your health. Please feel free to share this. Tag a friend. My mission is to help more people than I can every single day. So share this, tag this, whatever you need to do. Add your name to my Google spreadsheet so you can stay tuned of all my closed workshops, my Zooms, my live workshops, in-person workshops, and where I'm traveling around and talking. So you guys have an amazing day and I look forward to hearing from you soon.